Good day everyone, my name is JF and welcome. Today we're going to talk about how to build a 4 to 8 volt hybrid on and off grid solar power system. And it's going to be step by step, complete and detailed video tutorial. First of all, we would like to give a big thanks to our video sponsor, Jason Chua of One Point. And you can do a one-stop shop with all the parts in this video by using this code during your transaction with them. So enjoy shopping. Warning, electricity is dangerous and could cause harmful injuries or even death if handled incorrectly. If you lack the skill, proper knowledge, and experience, acquiring a professional service from qualified personnel is always the best thing to do. This will be a long tutorial video, so make yourself comfortable and do not rush. A friendly reminder, this is intended only as an additional guide and source of information regarding the installation of a 48 volt 5 kW solar power system using a DA 5 kW hybrid inverter. Please watch the whole video before asking anything in the comment section and check out my offered services in case you need assistance with your project. On our video content, we have major parts list and specs safety devices on AC and DC side, wires, cables, and miscellaneous, cost breakdown, animated diagram, grounding system, commissioning, which is the step-by-step -step procedure, and of course, the return on investment calculations. Major parts list. We have hybrid inverter, solar panels, and battery bank. So we are going to use 7 pieces of 500 watts 3 nanometer vertex. 7 pieces is equal to 3.5 kilowatt Pmax. And also we have a hybrid inverter. This is the 48 volts, 5 kilowatt. Model name is Sun-5K-SG03LP1-EU. And on our battery bank, we're going to use one solar 48 volts, 200 amp hours lithium iron battery. So let's start with the 500 watt solar tree number vertex. That's the model name. Pmax is 500 watts. VOC is 51.7 volts. VMP is 42.8 volts. ISC 12.28 amps. IMP 11.69 amps. Dimensions, height, uh, width, and depth. It is 2,187 by 1,102 by 35 millimeters. For the complete specs of the solar panel, check out the link under the video description. For the 5 kilowatt hybrid inverter, we have the output, AC output and UPS power, 5,000 watts or 5 kilowatt. Maximum efficiency is 97.6. Maximum PV input power is 6.5 kilowatt or 6,500 watts. Battery voltage range 40 volts to 60 volts DC. PV input voltage is recommended is 370 by the manufacturer. That's the ideal VOC voltage. The minimum is 125, the maximum is 500 volts. MPPT voltage range is 150 volts to 425 volts. MPPT efficiency, this has high uh, efficiency of 99.9%. .9%. PV input current is 13 plus 13, which means it has two MPPT input or trackers. Maximum charging current is 120 amps. And it is very important for you to uh, read the complete specs of this hybrid inverter, as well as the user manual. Make the manual as your best friend for a couple of weeks. Read and familiarize the manual. And if possible, I would suggest memorize it. The last one is our 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery bank. Model name is OS48B uh, 48 200 amp hours. Nominal voltage is 51.2. Cutoff is 44.8 volts. Capacity is 200 amp hours. Standard charging current is 0.2C, which is equivalent to 40 amps. 
maximum charging current is 0.5c 100 amps discharge current 0.5c 100 amps and the maximum discharge current is 1c 200 amps charging operating temperature is 0 degrees to 50 degrees celsius and discharge operating temperature is minus 20 degrees to 55 degrees celsius quality assurance period it has three years or 36 months for complete specifications check out the link under the video description safety devices dc and ac side first on the list we have our pv isolator switch rated 32 ohms 1200 volts dc now to the experts who are watching this video please hold your horses do not comment yet or give any violent reactions i have an explanation for this later on second is the two pole mccb if you have 3.5 like in this tutorial 3.5 kilowatt of pmax on your pv array 125 amps is enough otherwise if you're going to maximize the 6.5 kilowatt pmax of pv array i recommend use 150 amps 600 volts dc another thing is the pictures that we're using they might be showing different values compared to what is written on the specifications that i've given the third is the dc mcb or two pole dc mcb rated 20 amps 1000 volts and next to that is the two pole dc spd rated 20 to 40 ka 500 volts and of course we're going to use ac mcb two pieces of this we're going to use one for the hybrid inverter input and another for ac output rated 32 ohms 275 volts or you can have higher voltage rating and two pieces of two pole ac spd rated 20 to 40 ka 275 volts last on the list is the copper ground rod the length is 2.4 meters now let's talk about the pv isolator switch rated voltage is 1200 volts or 1200 volts ip rating is ip66 applicable current is from 6 amps to 32 amps working temperature is from minus 5 degrees to 60 degrees celsius standard it is iac 60947-3 we're gonna use it as a switch isolator switch between PV array to DC MCB. And note that this will be optional. The DA hybrid inverter already has a built-in PV switch, which is located at the bottom part of the inverter. But still, it's nice to have this as extra in the setup. Another thing is, if using this PV isolator switch violates any electrical standard or code in your country then do not use it simple as that now let's check out the dc mccb as i said the pictures might be showing different values compared to what i have provided on the specifications but they serves only one purpose and that is for presentation poles two poles voltage is uh, 600 volts there are also mccbs with higher voltage and applicable current is 150 amps but as i mentioned earlier using uh, 3.5 pmax of pv array you can use 125 amps of mccb otherwise if you want to use or maximize the pv pmax of 6.5 kilowatt working temperature is from negative or minus 5 degrees celsius to 40 degrees standard icu is 50 ka ics is 35 ka and application this will be used between the hybrid inverter to the battery bank amp rate calculation this is uh, important mccb is capable of protecting both directions of current this means that the charging and discharging current has to be calculated correctly if using 3.5 kilowatt of pv array the MCCB amp rate is 125 amps and with 6.5 PV array we need 150 amps wires cables and miscellaneous 
First on the list, we have 10 AWG, 6 square millimeter, twin core, 30 meters to 50 PV wire. But the length should uh, be calculated based on the distance between your PV array and the main system. But I would suggest at least by 30 meters. Next is the ground wire. It has to be 8 AWG or 10 square millimeter, at least 30 meters. Third is the 2 AWG 35 square millimeter battery cable, at least 5 meters each with terminal lug. And 8 AWG or 10 square millimeter, 10 meters of THH and AC wires. If you can buy a silicon wire of the same gauge and length, it would be much easier for you when it comes to installation. It has a much higher thermal resistance and flexible enough for all the bendings you are going to make when connecting every parts. We also need two pieces of 8 ways MCB enclosure box. You can also use a 10 ways, two of them, one uh, for the DC side and one for the AC side. I always separate enclosure box for DC and for the AC. And then we have railings and I don't have the length or measurement yet because I would like to explain this later on on the animated diagram. So we have cable trays, we need 5 meters minimum and 12 pieces of mid clumps, 4 pieces of end clumps, 16 to 20 pieces of L foot, splices, and MC4 connectors at least have 4 pairs or even better to have more. If you'd like to take a break to get some fresh air or fresh cup of coffee, you can do it now. When you come back, you can use the timestamps under the video description. And now we are on the part where we're going to break down all the expenses. So major parts list, DC and AC safety devices, wires, cables, and miscellaneous. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with this, so feel free to pause the video if needed. So on our major parts list, we have 60,000 pesos for the hybrid inverter and 66,500 for 7 pieces of 500 watt solar panels and 120,000 pesos for our battery bank. In total, we have 246,500. So I rounded that off to 250,000 pesos. Safety devices, we have a total of uh, 8,250, rounded off to 9,000. Wires and miscellaneous, here's the list. Here are the prices and total is 20,950 rounded off to 21,000 pesos so major parts list 250,000 safety devices 9,000 and wires and miscellaneous 21,000 with a grand total of 280,000 pesos so feel free to capture this or have a screenshot and you can use this later on now let's see how we arrange all parts on the wall. So let's make a wall mount mock-up layout. Okay, the hybrid inverter and then the DC enclosure box with all the DC safety devices as well as the AC safety devices enclosure box. Then the battery bank, cable trays and then the PV switch now you can have the PV switch on the right side or left side, it's up to you. Now I would like to suggest that you use a bus bar for all the ground wires. Either you put that on the left side or right side. And we have our MCCB in the middle. Then uh, you can connect the MCCB to the hybrid inverter and then to the battery bank. Then followed by our PV isolator switch, connect that and then to the PV array and of course all the ground wires goes to the bus bar and then bus bar to the ground rod now we have our AC output from the inverter and the AC input to the inverter and we have to ground the chassis on the hybrid inverter connected to the bus bar and of course the CT sensor with the arrow pointing to the hybrid inverter that's the uh, CT sensor 
And important things to remember for CT sensor, battery communication cable, and battery temperature sensor installation, please refer to the user manual. If you don't have net metering installed provided by your power company, make sure the arrow is pointing towards the inverter. Otherwise, all the energy that you export back to the grid, you will have to pay for it as a consumption. So in case you are going to ask, what if you're going to use dual springs of PV array and also doubling the capacity of your battery bank? So this is how it's gonna look like. So we have the battery banks, two times uh, 200 amp hours, and the bus bar with all the ground wires, two PV switch towards or going to PV arrays, all the wirings needed, and the city sensor, and that's it. You can do a screenshot or capture this for your reference later on. We are now on the animated diagram of PV array, safety devices, and grounding system. First, let's take a look at the PV array. We have single string of 3.5 kilowatt Pmax using 7 pieces of 500 watts. And the dimensions of solar panel is 2187 by 1102 by 35 millimeters. So we're gonna take this, the width, multiply that with seven pieces of solar panels. And we have 7.7 .7 meters in length. Considering that we are gonna use mid clumps and we should have an excess on both ends of the array. So I think we're gonna use at least 8.5 meters. Two of 8.5 railings. Now you can always cut it into the length that you need or that suits you best. Now this is how it's gonna look like with L footings, nine on each railing. The distances between uh, L foots, I think approximately uh, less than one meter. So here's the solar panel and I don't know if you can see that uh, rectangle, small gray rectangle, that is the end clumps. And the next solar panel, connected and then the mid clumps okay and then so on yeah so. and then the end clumps so we're going to connect the positive line and then the main uh, negative line and this is going to our pv isolator switch and here's the array specifications of this single string so we have a Pmax of 3,500 watts or 3.5 kilowatt, VOC 361.9 volts, VMP of 299.6 volts, ISC of 12.28, and IMP of 11.69. In case you're wondering how it's going to look like with dual strings, maximizing the 6.5 Pmax of the hybrid inverter. So you can capture this or make a screenshot that you can use later on. And now to the main system animated diagram. So in this part, we're gonna take a look at the bottom view of the hybrid inverter where all the connections are located. First, we have our DC SPD and then the DC MCB. We have our PV switch and MCCB of course, the AC for the load side or AC output of the hybrid inverter together with the AC SPD and another AC MCB for the AC input or grid of our hybrid inverter together with AC SPD. Now we connect the DC MCCB to the terminal of the hybrid inverter, positive and negative, using the two AWG or 35 square millimeter battery cable. And let's proceed connecting that to our battery bank. And then we can connect the DC MCB using the MC4 connectors on the PV input number one of the hybrid inverter. And then we can proceed to the PV switch using again the same wires and another set of MC4 connectors. And don't forget to parallel connect the DC SPD and using the 8AWG or 10 square millimeter ground wire we can connect the DC SPD output or ground to the bus bar which is connected to our ground rod. 
then we can connect the PV array output to the input of our PV switch. Working on to the AC side, let's first connect the load or the AC output of the hybrid inverter to AC MCB. This is where we're going to use the 8AWG or 10 square millimeter THHN wire or even better using silicon wire of the same gauge. And then we can wire the rest of the load or AC output of our hybrid inverter. And using again the ground wires, we can connect the AC SPD ground to the bus bar, which is also connected to our ground rod. And the same thing with the chassis of the hybrid inverter. Now working on to our grid connection, this one goes to our AC MCV, and that is from the DU or distribution utility. That is for the AC input of our hybrid inverter. Again, we have to connect the AC SPD parallel into AC MCB and then connect the ground wire. And then we connect our CT sensor. And important things for CT sensor, battery communication cable and battery temperature sensor installation, please refer to the user manual. If you don't have net metering installed provided by your power company, make sure the arrow of the CT sensor is pointing towards the inverter. In case you are wondering how it's going to look like for dual strings or maximizing the 6.5 hybrid inverter PV input power, here it is. So feel free to capture this or have a screenshot that you can use later on. And now we are on grounding system. It's one of the most controversial part when it comes to solar power system installations. And I have been receiving a lot of questions regarding this. Today, I'm going to try my best to explain this in the most profound manner so everybody can understand. Let's start with PV array. Here's our solar panels. And we need a ground. We also need a ground rod. There you go. And by using a ground wire, we can connect one of the panels to the ground rod. Supposedly, that should be enough to make the grounding system work properly. But most of the professional solar installers that I've met, including me, sometimes I do this. I bind all the solar panels with a copper wire just to make sure that there is continuity within all the panels. And that is very important. All solar panels must be tested if each one of them has a continuity connection from one to the next. Don't just rely on clumps and railings. Because some solar panels, they have a thin coating on their frames that serves as insulation. If needed, band all PVs using copper wire. Now you don't have to do this if you are 100% sure that all the solar panels have continuity to each other. The next important thing is the ground rod has to be installed at the nearest location or right below the PV array. And now let's take a look at all-in-one ground rod. Okay, we have the PV array, the DC SPD. Of course, we have our hybrid inverter, the AC SPD on the AC output of our hybrid inverter, and another one for the AC input of the hybrid inverter. So we can just have one ground rod and connect all of this into that. The next thing is all-in-one ground using bus bar. So we have our bus bar that should be pure copper. And we have the ground rod. And we have to connect our bus bar. Then we have the PV ground wire. DC SPD connected to the PV wire, parallel to the PV wire. We also have the hybrid inverter ground wire. AC SPD hybrid inverter AC output and of course the AC SPD hybrid inverter AC input and if needed you can enclose this with an enclosure that is rated IP65 or IP66. Now let's take a look at using two separate ground rods. We have our PV array on this side and the main system on this side as well. If there is a huge gap between these two huge distance Better to have a ground rod for your PV array and another one for the main system. Connect your PV array on that first ground rod and the main system on the second one. Important thing, there is no certain rule when it comes to the distance, but the main objective is to have the least resistance in conductors as much as possible. 
A huge amount of distance means a longer wire is needed and could potentially increase resistance. And we are now on the commissioning. If you have reached this far, you have to give yourself a gentle tap on your shoulder. Good job. The very first thing on our list is to turn on MCCB for battery bank. The second thing to do is turn on the power switch, which is located at the bottom. Now, from this moment on, you have to give your inverter a few seconds before doing anything else. And you have to be very sensitive and read the display of your hybrid inverter. The third thing to do is turn on the PV switch and PV isolator switch. Now, if you did not use any external PV isolator switch, you only have to turn on the DE PV switch. Next to that is turn on DC MCB for PV input. And then turn on AC MCB for DE grid input. Wait a few seconds before doing anything else. When everything seems to be fine, the next thing to do is turn on AC MCB for DE AC output. And now your solar power system is ready for service. Now we have come to the last part of our tutorial. We're going to do some calculations regarding return on investment. And we're going to base it on the system's energy production capacity. Now note, this is only an approximation since there is no such thing as 100% when it comes to ROI calculations. There are simply too many variables to be considered. So let's begin with energy production. We have 3.5 kilowatt PV array. And let's say we have to multiply that into 4 hours of sunlight. You can use 3.5, 3 hours as you wish. Here I'm going to use 4 hours of sunlight. So basically, the result is 14 kilowatt hour a day. And we have our distribution utility kilowatt hour rate. Let's say we have 10 pesos. In some places, they have 15, 12, 13. But here, I'm going to use 10 pesos. 14 kilowatt hour multiplied by 10 pesos. Basically, we have 140 pesos in a day. And multiply that into 30 days. Basically, we have 4,200 in a month and we have 50,400 in a year. Bringing back our cost breakdown total, we have 280,000 pesos divided by 50,400, and we have five years and five months, more or less, of ROI period. And that's it for our tutorial. Thanks for watching. Once again, this is JF. Until next time, God bless.